Good morning, everyone. This is Jay Johnson from DailyTexture.com. This morning, I wanted to put together this short little video, or at least I hope it'll be shorter than some of my others, <clears throat> that will show you a little trick I have discovered on using Topaz Impression uh, to create a painterly preset that still looks very realistic, but that gets rid of the excess noise in a picture. Um, most of the time, I'm shooting at a higher ISO, so I have a lot of noise in my photos. And there's uh, Topaz Denoise will get rid of noise, but on this particular photo, and on some of my others, or many of my others, that doesn't necessarily do the job, especially with what I'm going to do with this one. This is the original photo I got the other day of this beautiful buck. Um, as you can tell, he's very small in the frame. Well, I wanted to create a piece of art him where he was the focal point without cropping him down so this is how I do that um, I'm going to copy this image and I'm going to make my regular size image which is 6,000 by 6,000 pixels and I'm going to paste him there now, as you can tell he's pretty small I'm going to enlarge his size by using a transform tool to drag out the image like this and even dragging it out to the edges he is still fairly small so we're going to make it even bigger in this frame because this is the size of my artwork that I want to create and I'm going to show you here what happens when you do this and most of you who do photography I already know if you enlarge a photo, you're going to have a very uh, noisy, the noise is going to be increased, it's going to be pixelated, it's basically going to look horrible. Um, that's why they tell you not to do it. Don't enlarge your photos when you upload them to meet a certain size requirement for Canvas, etc. But you can prepare them in such a way beforehand at the larger size using this uh, preset I've created an impression. I haven't figured out, I don't know if there's a way, um, but I haven't found it or figured it out yet where we could share our presets with impression with other users. So therefore, I'm going to show you exactly how to set it the way I've set it, and then you can alter it to your liking. Okay, now this is my new image, but because I've blown him up, it's made him even more fuzzy and more noisy, as you can see right here. So this is where the fun comes in. We're going to go into Topaz. Well, first we're going to merge these layers. And then we're going to go into Topaz. I go into Photo FX Lab so I can access everything from that one module of the software. And this takes just a second. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is attempt to denoise him but I've already done this one so I, I know it's not going to work very well as you go into denoise you can see just how noisy and bad that is and I'm going to hit strong and you see uh, this is before this is after running it it didn't really make a whole lot of difference so I knew that this was going to be one that if I wanted to do something with this image I was going to have to take it in impression and use my little preset I've created but I'm, I'm denoising him anyway, and I'm going to boost him up a little bit after this uh, is finished processing. I'm going to boost up the clarity a little bit before I go into impression. And it's a big image, so it takes a second. Okay, the denoise is done, didn't really do much to it. It's in pretty bad shape. Now I'm going to go into Clarity. I, I go to the Nature tab, or the Nature Collection, and I choose Fur and Feathers. You've got Fur and Feathers 1 and 2. 2 has a little bit more boost of color. Uh, 1 is fine for this one, so I'm going to click that and click OK. And of course that brought back some of the noise when I did that. But that's okay because we're going to get rid of that.
Okay. Now that pumped him up a little bit, gave a little bit more division between him and the background. At this point, we're going to duplicate this layer by clicking on Duplicate right here um, in Photo FX Lab. And then I'm going to go to Filter and Topaz Impression. Now I'm in a um, the section called My Presets, which is ones that I've altered and saved uh, myself. Basically an impression, you can start with any preset and change it to how you want. And I'm going to go down to one I have called uh, J Simple. It's very easy. Just simplifies everything, smooths everything out. And I'm going to roll this up so you can see. This is what it looks like after running this preset I've created. And this is before. See how it took away all the noise? Gave him a more painterly look. But he still looks realistic. That's before. That's after. And now I'm going to take you into this preset. Which is clicking this little button right here. And when you get ready to make this preset for yourself. You can start on any preset and click the little button. And then you're going to set your settings like I have them here, which I'm going to show you right now. And you're going to save it. Now when you change anything in here, any of these items, there's going to be a little plus sign up here right here. Which is, I'll show you that after uh, I go through the, the settings. But the little plus sign is where you will then go to save your preset. So you can do it again. So just start with any preset click on it and hit that little button in the middle and we're going to start with the brush I've chosen the first brush for this which is type 1 so you need to click type 1 under brush the next setting is brush size I've got the brush size set to 0 0.67 which you can drag the slider over um, or type it in here next setting is paint volume I've got that set to 0 0.06 the next setting is paint opacity and I've got that set to 0 0.09 stroke rotation I have a 0 stroke color variation is also at 0 the stroke width is minus 0 0.31 the stroke length is minus 0 0.14 the spill is set at 0. The smudge is set to 0 0.09. Coverage is set to 1.00 all the way to the right. Now in color, the color section, overall hue is set to 0. I've boosted saturation just a little bit to 0 0.20. And the lightness is set to 0. Then we're going to go down to the lighting section. Brightness is set to 0. Contrast is set to 0 0.38. I have vignette set to 0 0.08. And vignette transition set to 0 0.50. I have done nothing in these two boxes right here. And the next section is texture. I have strength set to 0 0.01, size set to 0 0.66, and the texture I've chosen is called cracked surface. So you can scan through this little list of textures here until you find this one and you would click on that. Now a lot of these, um, let's look at background type. A lot of these have the background type, if you click on that, they have the background type set like this when you first see it. And as you can tell, that lets some of the paper show through, which I didn't like. I don't like that because, it, I mean, not on this particular set um, preset, because I want everything to show as clear as it can. So if you click on that little background type and move it over to original, it, the uh, original will be highlighted in blue. Then um, that will give you the realistic look right here. Now. As you noticed, I clicked on background type, and 
then clicked on it again. So now my little plus sign has appeared here, which you should have once you have altered your settings to match these settings. You should have a little plus sign here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you through and show you exactly how to save it, what you're going to see when you click the little plus sign. Um, let's take, just so I can make a change and show you how to do that, I'm going to take vignette down to zero. And that's just going to, you know, because I don't even know why I have vignette set on there. I don't usually use a vignette. <clears throat> so I'm going to save this as a new name. Right now it's called J Simple, but I want to save this as a new preset. So you click the plus button and it comes up like this. And you can type in J or whatever you want. And I'm going to type it J Simple dash no. Uh, uh, remember how to spell vignette <laughs> no vignette and you don't you can click any of these if you want to tag it with to have it appear in another um, group of presets I just click don't click any of those and click save and it will appear in my preset list and then after you've got all your settings set and you've saved it and you run this on your image you can click OK. And this takes you back to the main screen. Now because I've duplicated, you can see that that's my before when I turn off the little eyeball on this. And this is the impression layer. So you can see the difference. It still looks very realistic, but it's all smoothed out without a bunch of noise. Um, I want to bring back a little detail in the eyes and nose of this guy. Okay, so that's after running impression and if I turn that off you can see how I've lost a lot of detail right here and I've lost a little bit of detail in the eyes and then a little bit of detail in the horns and right here this is these are this area is a little bit rough anyway right here so um, they can it can have a little noise there if I want it. So at this point I'm just going to mask off a little bit. I'm clicking on the masking tab and I'm going to mask off. I'm going to raise my flow all the way up. No, I'm going to put it in the middle. And I'm going to set my brush size pretty low to maybe one. And I'm just going to tap on these eyes and bring back a little detail around the eyes, especially where that white spot is. Yes, it brings back a little bit of noise, but because I have flow, which is like the opacity set in the middle, it's not bringing it back full strength. But it just brightens up those white spots a little more. And I could always then go into another program and add a little bit more white there. Now I'm going to do the nose a little bit. Go around his little nostrils and across right here where there was a little bit of division. And then maybe around his lip a little bit. And then I'm going to do a little bit right here on his horns. I'm just gently brushing right there to bring back a little of the original photo. Okay. So this is before. This is after with some masking done. And now you see his eyes look a little brighter than they did a while ago. And his nose looks a little stronger. So now all of that noise right there from that original image that I messed with is gone thanks to impression, but it's still very realistic and it's a smoother, more painterly look. At this point, I would uh, merge these two layers by clicking from stack here on the bottom. And at this point I would choose a, I would click on from file and choose a texture from my texture file to um, blend in with him, which is what I did on the final image. Let me see. I chose um, this texture from the dyed marble collection called olive brown. And I chose another layer of the dark gray as well when I did the final image. But I want to show you. Um, the uh, well, let me go find him. 
recent places. That's a fast way to find them. When I made this image this morning, which I called the leader, this is after adding textures and blending with him, those two dyed marble textures, this is what I ended up with. But I started by um, altering my main image here in impression to get rid of all of that noise and give him a painterly look before I added the textures to it and blended that in with the background and the grass and I the textures actually uh, or I actually changed his coloring a little bit to go better with those textures I went to I believe Topaz Adjust on the deer layer and I chose one called Black Rose under the Toned Collection. And see that toned him down a little bit. Uh, made the colors a little bit more neutral. Which then um, blended with the textures that I had picked a little bit better. So we'll just run that. I've done so many lessons on blending with the texture. I'm not going to go into that here. But I, I did this color adjustment to make him go better with these textures that I had picked from the dyed marble collection. Anyway, I hope that helps you with um, your photos and getting rid of some excess noise. Uh, I used to worry about noise a lot. And I would go over here and I'd run denoise on a photo. And it, it would... Um, sometimes it does the job and sometimes it doesn't. I tend to shoot on very overcast cloudy days it's not always my choice to do that I do like cloudy days where the Sun is not direct or the Sun is diffused a little bit but lately it seems like every time I go out to photograph it'll be bright Sun when I leave and by the time I get where I'm going the Sun has gone under all these clouds and it gets real dark and dreary and then I have to turn my ISO up because if these guys move um, I want a clear shot of them running or uh, moving around. Uh, if it's too low light, that higher ISO really helps capture the clear shot of them in movement. And so I often shoot, end up shooting with a high ISO because I am end up shooting on a really crappy day, <laughs> which is what happened this week with this guy. I mean, we left the house and it was absolutely gorgeous outside supposed to be bright sunny all day and we got down there to Shiloh and sure enough sun went in 10 minutes after we got there and it turned cloudy and overcast and I was like oh boy uh, but I don't worry about it anymore since I have Topaz Impression and I've adjusted or created this preset from another preset which I don't even remember which one I started with you can start with any one as long as you put those settings on what I told you, you should get the same result. And of course, you can alter the settings to your liking. I don't know why I chose that surface uh, texture cracked surface. I think that was in already in the texture I start or the the preset I started with. So I just left it alone. But you could change that to a different texture or none. And be if you're going to add textures like this to it, it really doesn't need one. Um, so you can alter any of those settings. You can save them the way I've saved them if you want to get the result I've gotten. And then if you find a better way that suits you better, you can alter any of those settings like I showed you when I took the vignette off and save it as a new preset. And um, anyway, I'm not worried about noise anymore. And if you're using Topaz Impression, you can actually it's, you can use it to, of course, make paintings very painterly paintings but if you just want to use it in a very simple way it'll help you on these really noisy photos to get rid of that noise and simplify things down a little bit and I hope that you find it helpful as much as I do thanks for watching have a great day